Hello friends, this will be a short video on a strategy design pattern. We will create this small beautiful website, just UI and the infrastructure code. If you are not aware of web application development, don't be scared. I will write a very simple code in C sharp, but doesn't matter if you are a Java developer as well. This will be a very simple code and you will be able to follow it comfortably. However, we will just be working on the code structure for the payment module. Here we will learn how this pattern works and when to apply them in your application. This is a very simple and most commonly used pattern and I will cover everything that is required to understand this. I will explain by showing you the wrong way first and then we will fix the problem by refactoring it by using a strategy pattern and make the code more readable, maintainable and scalable. In next 10 minutes, you will be completely comfortable in implementing this design pattern in your real-time projects. So let's get started. So I am in my Visual Studio. I have created a folder here, Behavioral Pattern. Strategy falls under this category. Let me go ahead and create an ASP.NET MVC core project. Let me name it as Strategy. So, Visual Studio scaffolding has given me a default ASP.NET core template. Let me run this. So you get this default site. Now I would like to update my index view a bit to match my shopping site requirement. I have already written the code. Let me copy and paste. So this is a very simple mostly HTML code. Let me zoom it a bit. So I have very few CSS here. If you are following with me then I would say pause the video and you can quickly type it. Then I have this main body here. Again a very simple HTML. Just a header, product on sale, an image. I have included the image here under www root folder. Price of the product. Some description about the product. And the radio buttons for selecting the payment mode credit card or debit card. Finally, a submit button. I have also created a very simple success view to display the message payment by credit card or debit card is successful. With this, let me run the application. So my very few CSS and HTML gives me this view. Let me change this strategy to shop today. I have to go to layout page. Let me change the color to red. Let's run it. Perfect. Now we have to add our server side code in our controller. Let me get my code and paste it here. So what we are doing here? For now we kept the customer ID as constant. We have created this HTTP POST method which gets called when we click the submit button. It checks if the payment mode is not null or empty, gets the customer bank detail, checks if it is not null. Again, getting bank detail code here is not correct as it definitely violates single responsibility principle. However, we are not focusing on that as of now. We will be refactoring our payment process code. So we call a method to process credit card payment. Let's go to this private method. As of now, I have just assumed that all the credit card payment related code is written here. It could be quite complex algorithm as well as quite a lot of code as well. Just to get a feel, let's see how credit card payment kind of works. So a customer goes to a shop and swaps his card for paying the cost of the goods he purchased. Then the details are sent to some kind of processor and then the processor sends the details to some of the further processing system like Visa or MasterCard. And then it goes to the issuing bank where it is decided 
whether the payment should be allowed or not and perhaps lot more processes are involved. It means there will be a lot of logic coming in, right? Similar will be the case for debit card as well. Now if payment is successfully processed, we redirect the call to payment success message page with ID as credit card. And similarly for debit card, the redirect to action calls the payment success action. Write the ID value to the view back and displays the view with view back value. Now with this, let's build the application and run it. So our UI is as it is. Let's see if our process payment is working fine. Let's select credit card. So it says payment by credit card is successful. Let's go back and select debit card. It says payment by debit card is successful. Perfect. So it means our application is working as expected. However, the problem is in the internal code base, right? The code is not maintainable and extensible. Also perhaps not testable as well. Now let's refactor this using the suitable design pattern. For this use case, strategy pattern looks to be the best. So what is strategy pattern? The definition says, define a family of algorithms, encapsulate each one and make them interchangeable. Strategy lets the algorithm vary independently from clients that use it. Strategy pattern basically has these three parts. You have something called context. It holds the reference of our strategy. And the strategy interface is something that defines how to work with the strategy. Then we have the concrete strategies, which is the implementation of our strategy algorithm. So if we take our code example, then it can be translated into this. Context is a class that has the reference of our strategy and calls process method on it to process the payment. iStrategy is an interface called iPaymentStrategy and the concrete strategy could be a credit card. If we draw an UML using these paths, then it would look something like this. If we have another concrete payment mode, say debit card, then just create another concrete implementation of iPayment strategy. With this, it makes our application readable, more maintainable and also testable and scalable. The main idea here is that the client can select an implementation at runtime based on the requirement without having to extend the class. With this, let's go ahead and refactor our code. Let me create a folder called business service where I will keep all my strategy classes. Let me create my strategy interface and concrete classes and come back. So I'm done with my interface and concrete class. iPayment processor is my strategy interface with a method process that takes an input bank detail. I have created concrete implementations for my payment processors. This is concrete credit card payment, implemented method process. This calls a private method process payment credit card, where all my credit card processing logics will be written. Similar changes are made in debit card payment as well. Let me rename this. Now let's go back to our controller class and do initial refactoring. Our focus area of refactoring is this. And in that also, we want to extract process payment credit card functionality and debit card functionality to a separate strategy. We have already extracted this to our strategy classes. Now let's instantiate them here and see if our functionality is still working. So both the strategies are instantiated. Let me use it. Now I can delete these two methods. Note that our strategy implementation is still not done yet. 
Remember, the context class, we are yet to write that. But refactoring should be always done in small chunks. So let's test this much first. Let's select credit card. That's correct. Let's test debit card. So we get the expected result for both. So with this much of code changes, our functionality is still working. Now let's take our code closer to strategy pattern. Let me create the context class and a factory and come back. So this is my context class with a method set payment strategy, which receives the payment processor, which is assigned to a class level variable. I have another method called process payment that just knows to call respective strategy for processing the payment. Created an additional factory class, which has a method that takes mode and returns respective strategy instance. Now let's go ahead and make the changes to our controller class. Let me delete these two instantiation as this will be done by our factory now. Let me instantiate my context class. Let's set the strategy. We can safely remove this if else now. Let me copy this first. Let's redirect. That's it. Now let's delete this ugly code. So now we are done with our strategy implementation. Let me walk you through the context class again. So this context has a reference to our strategy for processing a payment. The context does not need to know if it has to process using credit card or debit card. It simply needs to know that it has the capability of processing a payment. This means that our context class is decoupled from the particular implementation of how to process the payment based on what the client has selected. Now let's run the application and see if our functionalities are still intact. Let's select credit card. That's okay. Let's select debit card. Perfect again. Everything works as expected. So what did we get by introducing strategy pattern? Now we have more extensible application, which means we can now easily introduce new strategies without affecting existing ones. Our application is much cleaner, which adheres to solid principles like single responsibility and open close principle. That's all for today. If you found this to be helpful, then please do subscribe for all my upcoming videos on C Sharp and different technologies. Thanks.